Hello my friends. My, hello my friends. My name is Claire and you've stumbled upon porch coffee, so please stick around. Oh. Wake up. Wake up. Hello my friends. My name is Claire and this is my channel. Woodshed Theory. Here. I make content about what it is like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me, so if that sounds good to you, or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button, ring the bell, I almost forgot to mention that I put out videos a few times a week, so click the like and the share, help out your good friend Claire, ooh. I've been trying to wake up early to do these, and uh, today, my eyes just aren't working right yet. <laughs> How was your week? Mine was okay. It was okay. If you're new here, I'm a late diagnosed autistic lady who has coffee with you on Monday mornings. Why? Well, sometimes when you're autistic, uh, it can be hard to have friends, it can be hard to make them and maintain them. I struggle with that myself, so I come on here, the crow's laughing at me, so I come on here on Monday mornings and have coffee with you and tell you about my week and you can tell me about your week in the comments and there you have it. Internet friends! Uh, further evidence that things are a hot mess this morning. <laughs> I forgot to update the sign. Man, I thought I was doing so well getting ready. This should say 213. One person. Mug club update. <laughs> One person. Join the mug club this week. We're at 214. So I apologize for not updating the sign. The person who updated it, I will update it next week to include you. So happy to have you in mug club. What's mug club? Well, first of all, if you want to be in mug club, you're in mug club. It's in our hearts. So... There's that. But also, I sell these mugs on my website, witchedtheory.com. They match our Porch Coffee logo, and I have several different kinds available, and they help support me in the channel. So if you want to have coffee with me uh, on Monday mornings using the same mug, you can go ahead and do that. That's awesome. We're at 214, I think? Question mark? I try to keep the counting not that serious, but... Um, I'm not exactly sure how many mugs are have been sold. So I try I try my best. Items. For example, one of them is one of my old broken mugs. So keep that number there just as the ghost, the ghost and to honor the ghost of the mug. Another reason that I have dropped the ball this week, and it's totally my bad. So I, I apologize. Thanks for understanding. Right now is when we would normally do autism show and tell. Just to keep things super consistent and because I love listening to the intro, I present to you the intro to autism show and tell. It's autism show and tell. Where's the video? Um, there, there isn't a video and usually I will, um, it's again my fault. I will put an ask out if um, I need a few more for a few weeks, and I forgot. So I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. If you're new here, Autism Show and Tell is a segment that we've done more recently where members of the channel can send in a 60 second clip and show us some something that they collect or something from their special interest. It doesn't have to be that. It could just be special interest. Uh, just showing us and, and sharing their autistic joy with us. Because if you haven't seen an autistic person get excited about something, it's pretty cool. So uh, check out the past few videos and you can watch some autism show and tell. And hopefully we'll have some videos for you next week. I was even thinking about taking out something that I own and showing it to you as autism show and tell but that didn't happen either either and here we are half asleep hanging out so the week how was the week um 
Last week I was telling you about how, has it been two weeks already? I was telling you about how the dog got skunked and how terrible that was and living through that. Uh, I feel like my nervous system is back to where it needs to be. So I feel good about that. That took a really long time. Uh, after the whole skunk debacle. The house, smell, it smells fine. It's back to normal. There are still a few things that need to get done, like uh, I need to pick out a new rug because the one that got ruined, well, to be fair, it's been probably about two years now that I've thought I have to get rid of this mat, this rug in my house. It was um, made of jute, so it was impossible to clean. And I really want to get something washable, cleanable. Uh, I've tried cleaning it in the past. It hasn't really worked out. So when it got skunk all over it, it was just the appropriate time to get rid of it. So that's really the only thing I still have to do um, as far as replacing things. But I'm just glad that the skunk experience is over for now. And we'll just be more careful in this season of letting the poor dog out at night to not get him skunked. Because it was terrible for everybody, but I'm sure it was really bad for him. This is what happens though. It's been a few years and no skunk, no disaster. You get lulled into a false sense of security. Not cool. Not cool. Is that still good? Sorry, I had to stop filming and delete some stuff off my camera. Exciting. Speaking of uh, pet disasters, pet things that have been happening, many of you have met my sweet Prince Cat Ernie. He's a good guy. Probably the best cat. He's so loving. And, uh very curious and he was born under our porch actually when I was watching the skunk video that I told everyone to go watch I didn't tell everyone to go watch well I wrote it on the bottom you should go watch this video because there are kittens in it I didn't realize that uh, that video had all three of our little babies that were born under our porch a few years ago um, one of them unfortunately is no longer with us, but we still have two of the cats that were born under our porch. Ernie being one of them, he's a black cat. He's the best, he's so sweet. Uh, he loves snuggles, and he's a, he's just a good cat. He's like the furthest thing from a feral cat, which can be dangerous for him because the other cat that we have, her name is Roberta, Bert, Bert and Ernie, and she's more cautious and does not get hurt because of that. Now, Ernie, the other day, he didn't come home at his normal time, but I didn't panic. I thought he'll be all right. So he finally came home, he seemed fine. He was missing his collar, which is why, especially if you have outside cats and they wear a collar, do the breakaway collar. Um, because they can get themselves into some sticky situations and you want them to be able to pull out of their collar if they have to. So he came out, he came home, no collar, but he seemed fine, good spirits, good everything. Then I think it was two days later, I noticed that I thought I saw something in his eye. I'm going to try and be as the least graphic as I can about this. Uh, push comes to shove. Cats have a third eyelid. Um, if you didn't know that, surprise, surprise. Uh, it helps them keep things clean, I guess. Uh, protects their eye. Uh, there you have it. So sometimes if you see your cat that they seem to have their eyes um, open, but there's something covering their eye. That's their third eyelid. So I don't exactly know how this happened, but poor Ernie, uh, his 
uh, third eyelid got ripped on the bottom. Uh, there's some damage there. I'm assuming that it happened when he was out and we couldn't find him or he hadn't come home. The crow is agreeing. The crow being the co-host of this channel. <laughs> the co-host of Porch Coffee is, is crows. So, um, I was very worried and uh, took him to the vet right away. There didn't seem to be any other damage, but I just wanted to, I, you know, I didn't know what to do. Like, would he need surgery to fix it or just antibiotics? Regardless, we went to the vet. So the great news is, everybody, that his eye is going to be okay. He didn't need surgery, just the antibiotics. I just have to put, like, this goop in his eye four times a day, which is kind of laughable because the doctor was like, I know he's an outside cat, so at least three times a day. I'd say I'm getting at least three times a day. There's been a day I think that was two, but there's nothing I can do um, as far as he isn't around sometimes. So <laughs> I've just been trying to give him medicine whenever I can, and he does great with it. Um, there was no, they tested to make sure his cornea wasn't scratched. There's nothing seems to be bothering him other than obviously there's like, you know, his eyelids ripped. So that is obviously bothering him, but he's fine other than that. Um, there was no scratches, no nothing. So who knows what happened? Poor thing. Uh, but that was another thing that happened this week that like took up a lot of my mental energy and kind of took up most of a day. So lots of pet stuff going on here in this season. When I was checking the date this morning, I realized that this is the last full week of September. I mean, that means that I was really gonna do a drop this month. So I'm gonna just come out and say, I have an Etsy shop and in the past, I did monthly, almost, hat drops. And I haven't done them since the spring? Maybe March? Right, it was before Easter. So I am going to plan to do one in early October. Let's just put that out there. Um, I need a deadline to help me. Because this whole time I've been like, yeah, like, September. And obviously that has not worked. So I'm going to just say first week of October, two weeks, there's going to be a drop. And I'm just going to work hard, get it done, and everything is going to feel fine. <laughs> I sell like um, hats and crocheted items. The hats I make on my knitting machine or I crochet them. And there's going to be yarn mystery bags this time. I've been working really hard to get that together. It just hasn't happened as fast as I wanted, so here we are. Um, this month has just gone by so fast. I also need to schedule our monthly members only live stream. So fun. Uh, so if you want in on that, you can click the join button down below. And that also opens up being able to submit to Autism Show and Tell. I just realized I haven't really been looking at the camera much this porch coffee, and I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm just a middle-aged lady sitting here talking to herself. I think this is one of those mornings where there might be a nap after porch coffee. It's just really a much easier to film it earlier in the morning when the world is quiet, you know what I mean? So what have I been working on this week? Well, hopefully we'll see what happens. Uh, I've been working on a collab video, a sponsored some sponsored content. So hopefully that'll be out soon. That's what I was working on this week. So this past week and I'm happy with the work, but also nervous and I feel like it's the only thing I've really been able to focus on this week because I've just been nervous about it. Um, working with brands is like part of my dream and, and um, obviously a way that I can support myself and I really enjoy it, but it is a little bit nerve wracking guys because um, I started this channel to go into business for myself and I've accomplished that.
to some level of success. Uh, but then when I work with brands, then that brings in like another element where I'm not the only person involved and it makes me a little nervous. I hope that you get that. I hope you understand that. It's a little bit different. I'm really excited about the sponsorship and I'm excited to share it with everybody, but I just want to make sure I do a good job. I always want to represent myself well and uh, that can be scary, right? Because when it's just me talking to a camera, then I'm just representing myself and I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm representing a brand, I want to like put my best foot forward and do a good job and have them be happy with the work. So I'll keep you posted on that. Also, what happened this week? Uh, we put out the video of autistic people talking with Amanda from I Am Mind Blind. The video seems to be doing pretty well. I think it's got over a thousand views now and um, everyone is really liking the episode. Uh, several people said it is your favorite so far. I love them all equally because I have a great time um, meeting new people and um, talking to other autistic people. It's really amazing to me. It's very healing to me. I will say it's a great episode. So absolutely go check it out. Uh, Amanda is so cool and I can't wait for all of you who aren't familiar with her to be able to um, learn more about her. There have just been such great guests on the podcast. And that leads me to the next point, which is I've got two more podcast filming episodes scheduled. One and a half. One is just in the final part of being scheduled. The next few weeks, there should be episodes, more episodes out. And I can't believe that we're already going to be on episode, that'll be 15 and 16. It'd be so cool to be able to get like 20 to 25 episodes out every year. That's a lot, actually. There's only two, there's only 52 weeks in a year. So getting 20 episodes out a year is a lot for autistic people talking. So I'm happy with that. What this will we'll call the first year season one. So. Um, I've just really enjoyed doing that. Has, have you started a podcast? It's a lot of work. All of the ideas that I ever have, I'm like, this will be fun. This will be easy. And it turns into like a lot of work. So <laughs> I just like the podcast because it puts in another element of growth for me. Um, I keep learning new things and finding uh, ways that I can grow and learn about how to be more accommodating and how to interact with people. So I'm loving doing that. And a lot of you know that, uh, yes, I do take requests on who to ask to be at the podcast. Cannot make any guarantees, okay? I, tr I am a very small channel and, uh, I love having people on the podcast, but um, I, I can't, I can only ask so and do my best in that way. So if you have somebody you'd like to be on the podcast, definitely leave them in the comments. I can ask them. Um, every so often I sit down and I send out some emails and invite people and, and try my best and we try and make it work. So yeah, that's kind of how I'm doing right now. Um, that's kind of how my week went. I think what I'm struggling with, and if you've been here for any length of time, you know that this is just normal for me, is balance. I don't feel like I'm getting enough done. And I'd like to push myself further. Um, what I will say is, I'm not burning myself out which is super important to me, but I am feeling like I'm, it's not enough, but I think it's okay to struggle with those things. Um, I think it's going to be a lifelong struggle for me. I do need to push myself though. It's just where the limit is. Whereas in my past life, pre-diagnosis, um, I used to really push myself to the point where I was have meltdown and, and not be able to control my my own emotions which didn't feel good 
or um, be in burnout and I'm just not interested in that anymore? How can I uh, f be successful and um, still prioritize my mental health? That's kind of my biggest thing right now. I, I need to work on that. I did see a post. Maybe I can put it up on the screen. I don't know this person. I saw it posted on a Facebook group maybe. I, I don't know. I saw it posted online somewhere. And it was a repost then. Of somebody talking about how. I think maybe their child was uh, or is on the autism spectrum. And they pointed out to the parent that. And that could be wrong too. But uh, the point of the post was autistics are known by their behaviors when they are upset. Ooh, I felt a flush of emotion when I said that. And it's not very fair. Um, like people know autism by how autistic people behave when they're upset or in distress and that is not ideal <laughs> because um, there are so many other parts of autism that are have nothing to do with us being upset or how we act when we're overwhelmed um, don't you feel like that? I do. I, I hadn't thought about it before, but it's so true. Like when people think of autism, sometimes, or a lot of the times, they might be thinking about um, somebody who is having a meltdown. I don't like the way that I behave when that's happening to me. And it doesn't feel very good to have a meltdown. So it just kind of sucks that that is what people associate when there are so many beautiful things and nice things about being on the spectrum, like our ability to hyper-focus or um, our talent to know something um, all about our special interests and be experts at that. Like there are so many cool things about it and it just stinks that it's like the bad things that people associate with autism when it could be like the good things. It, I'm just asking for more balance, I guess. It would be nice if there was more balance, more understanding. Um, yeah, just something that's been on my mind. Anyway, uh, that's it kind of for the week, I think. I've been talking for a while. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Porch Coffee, otherwise known as Autistic Lady Rambles for 20 or so minutes. <laughs> Let me know about your week down in the comments. Um, if you're not subscribed, or if you think you are, could you just check and make sure that you've pressed the subscribe button right under the video? It's totally free to do that, and it really helps me. Uh, so I, I really appreciate it. Uh, sometimes people uh, get unsubscribed and it's just something that uh, YouTube does. No offense, YouTube. <laughs> uh, if you don't watch a channel for a long time or I don't even know how it works, but sometimes you get unsubscribed. So make sure you check on that. I hope that you have a wonderful day and uh, can't wait to read your comments and I'll see you next time. Bye friends. Bye.